for our scene, we're going to be rendering out the environment in Unreal and then rendering out the foreground in Maya and comping it into the scene. We're going to begin with talking about the environment rendering from Unreal. And so here we've got the combined render and Unreal currently doesn't have the ability to render out different light group passes. So we're going to have to kind of manually create them. So we've di divided up into, this is the indirect lighting pass. Now it's uh, not exactly indirect because it does have these kind of uh, emissive objects in it, but we're going to render those out separately and then subtract them from this pass. And then finally we're going to render out the uh, direct light and then subtract that from the other passes. So we're going to end up with here, this is just the sunlight pass which we get from rendering out the emissive lights and the sun and then just the emissive lights and then subtract them from one another to get just the direct sunlight. And then we have here, we're getting the bulbs added back in, which we have rendered out separately. And then we can kind of tweak that and then add it back in to get the desired mix that we like. And also over here, we've got these emissive lights and these everything but the sun lights. And we subtract out the emissive lights so we have only the skylight effectively. So how do we do that in Unreal? So let me begin by going over the render settings that we're going to need for these. I'm going to click here on the settings, open that up, and I'm going to go into here. I'm going to begin by loading in the Still Ultra preset. Again, this comes with Unreal as a default preset, so easy way to start out. And if we look in the output, this here, we're going to want to make that, uh, I'm going to be rendering out in um, HD, which is 1920 by 1080. And we're going to want each time we come in and do these different render passes, sort of manual render passes, we want to change the name. So um, right now it's uh, sequence, frame number, and ultra. So I'm going to change it to frame number. I'm going to take out the ultra and I'm making it uh, sequence name. It's not actually updating it correctly what it is. It's supposed to be sequence name dot frame number and then dot extension. And I'm going to add into it whatever my prefix is. So the first one I'm going to render out is the uh, sun. And you just would come in here and each time and you change that little additive to the name. Uh, we got the set for 24 frames per second. We need to put into here what our frame count is. Right now it's set to 0 to 2. Um, our frame count goes from uh, 0 to 100, but I actually don't want to have a 0 frame, so I'm going to say 0 to 101. And, and again, all this stuff, that's obviously going to be changing every single time you have to render because it was going to be different frame counts, different names and such. The high resolutions section here is something that we're not actually going to be using. It just kind of comes with the presets. This is where you can put into the tile count. You can increase that to a higher number and it'll render 
the render out in tiles, meaning it'll split the render up into say like four renders so that the G if your GPU can't handle the render resolution that you have, then this is a way to kind of uh, get it to not crash. So if you were rendering out say a 4K render, you'd make the tile count render out uh, four tiles and then you could render out four 1K renders and or just HD renders and yeah, get around that issue with uh, it crashing on because your GPU isn't strong enough. In our case, we're rendering this out in HD and we got a super strong GPU, so we don't need to use this at all. This game's overrides, um, we're gonna try to see if we can get away with uh, getting rid of those two things as I discussed in another video, just to speed things up. Let me go a little in depth with the anti-aliasing section here. You'll note that we have it set to none, which is admittedly an unintuitive thing to do for a high quality render. As you can see here, there are a whole bunch of AA methods in Unreal, and all of them involve blending multiple layers of pixels. For example, fast approximate anti-aliasing, or FXAA, is a post-process effect that uses a high contrast filter to find edges and smooth them. Temporal anti-aliasing upsampling, or TAAU, samples different locations within each frame and uses past frames to blend samples together. And then the newest one, temporal super resolution, or TSR, is likewise a temporal upscaler, like TAA, just more efficient in how it does the upscaling. But the bottom line, is that all of these are going to blend or smooth our pixels in the render, meaning that they will be incompatible with cryptomats, which need all the objects to maintain crisp edges so that the object ID pass lines up with the final images correctly. So we need to set the anti-aliasing to none, which leaves us with spatial and temporal sampling. In fact, both sp spatial and temporal sampling only work if the AA method is set to none. Otherwise, it's just going to use the default project settings of eight samples. There isn't any advantage to mixing temporal and spatial samples. You'll want to use either all temporal or all spatial. Now, temporal sampling is intended for scenes with motion blur, which we need to have turned off because motion blur in Unreal is a post-process smoothing of our pixels, which is, again, incompatible with cryptomats. So, we're using spatial sampling and we set it to a high enough number to get nice smooth edges on our geo. Here I have it set to 16. And just like any other render, you'll need to do some tests to find out the right amount of samples that you need. But that's kind of the backstory on how all of this stuff uh, works together and why we have the settings that we do in here. Then for deferred rendering, we are going to say disable multi-sample effects. This is again so that we can later work with Cryptomat. And under EXR we want to set it to multi-layer and then we need to add in a color output and set this to disable tone curve. And again, that's so that we get a linear, a scene linear EXR file out of this. And those are the basic settings that you need just to render out any kind of EXR sequence. And we're doing deferred rendering. That means we're rendering out from our camera as opposed to the panoramic rendering that we did before. So we could save this. Come into here, save as preset, and maybe we'll call this uh, basic render EXR. I'm just going to call it render EXR. And then when we are later going to be doing the cryptomats, we basically want to, we don't really need to have cryptonets on every single pass, so we're just going to, on the final one, we're going to put it on that one, and the other ones, we're just going to have it set up to kind of um, just give us the RGB pass and work well with the cryptomat pass. So that's for that, and then we're going to add in for the final pass, we're going to add in the cryptomats. If you have the Foundry plugin, you can just click on this here, 
but if you don't, then you can click on object IDs. They basically do the exact same thing. And this is fine to set this to full. There's other options that you can use instead. You can look in the manual for Unreal and see what these different things do. I'm just gonna keep it on full. And what we need to also do in the deferred rendering for this to work is we need to enable this and this. This is the um, giving us a pass for uh, depth, and this is giving us a pass for motion vectors, and Cryptomat, Cryptomat needs both of these to work. And again, we could save this out as a preset, and maybe we call that I already have render crypto here, so just to keep with my naming convention, I'm going to name this render EXR crypto. And in my particular case, I want to actually write out an additional pass where I want to write out the roughness pass to get the kind of the masking for the roughness or actually the roughness values I'm going to use as a mask. And so to do that, I need to come into the deferred rendering under the additional passes and I'm going to click on the little plus to add an element and I'm going to expand it out, turn it on and then go to the drop down here and I'm going to type in roughness. roughness material and then that gives me the roughness. Hopefully in the future the AOVs will be more like they are in other renderers, you know, RenderMan, Arnold V-Ray, where you can actually have different AOVs for all of the various render elements. Right now that's extremely limited and you have to just kind of work with what you got. Okay, since I have this set up to work with uh, cryptomats right now, or object IDs, I'm going to render out that main pass that we had in the comp from before, which is this one here, which doesn't have the skylight and doesn't have GI. So to do that, I need to come into my camera. So I'm going to click down here on my camera and I'm going to go to the search and type in global illumination here. The method is set to lumen. I'm going to turn it to none and then I'm going to go to my skylight and get rid of this and then I'm going to type in viz as invisible and make it not visible. And then I've got this render pass and I can click on here and render that out. And then I'm next ready to do the next one, which is, let's jump into Nuke and look. Next one I need to do is just the emissive materials. So to do that, I come back into here and I need to select my directional light, turn off the visibility for that, and now I just have the emissive materials. I then come into here under load save preset and I load in that preset that I made, which is all the right nice settings, but not rendering out the uh, cryptomat AOVs. And I say accept for that, and I click render, and I render that out. And then I'm next up ready to render out just the everything but the sunlights. I come back into here. I've got a missive on, I need to go to the skylight and set it to visible and then I need to go back to the camera and type in global illumination here and set the me method back to lumen and 
render that out. And then over here, if I make a cryptomat node, you can see that it comes in with all the cryptomats on it. One thing that's really important is that, so this is being read in as ACES CG, and it's not ACES CG. It's going to be in linear sRGB. However, if I switch this to linear sRGB here, then it destroys the cryptomat node. So we have to keep it as ACES CG and connect the cryptomat node directly to that, and then here do a OCIO color space conversion from linear sRGB into scene linear, and then we have our exposure. So it looks like this, comes in like this. We convert it, we do our exposure on it, and then we do our minus and plus operations to build the whole thing back together. And let me also show you what the roughness looks like. So here's the, the roughness node that I'm using down here in the comp in order to kind of accentuate the reflection. So here's the comp before and then after. I just sort of darkened these areas here so we can to look a little more wet and we can get some more reflections coming in there because I'm going to put in the reflection of the hero car in the water here. And I suppose you can see it when this is off, but just a little bit nicer to make it look a little more grungy. In the next video, we'll take a look at rendering out our hero assets in Maya, and then how to integrate them in the comp with the Unreal background environment.